Hello, welcome back to Funtime Crafts 24-7. This is a let's make video and this is what we're making today. Um, I decided this year uh, because I made these uh, beautiful uh, Valentine uh, trees uh, with you guys, these here. Um, I, I didn't really think about the um, fact that they're going to be sitting on a white wall. Like the backdrop of them is a white wall and they're really pretty on the white wall, but they kind of blend into the wall. You, unless the light sparkling on them and stuff, uh, to make everything, all the bullying shimmer, you don't necessarily, you kind of just look over them. And so I thought, well, what could I do? And I wanted to do something a little bit different than a traditional wreath, uh, to hang next to them. And so I thought, Hey, what if we do? Like, okay, let me get back here far enough, hopefully, so you could kind of get the idea of... So, I'm going to do them like this. So, my tree's going to be sitting on its little place there. And I wanted to hang this up behind it. Uh, kind of like, kind of like, like this. Can you guys, like, get an idea of, like... So... Yeah, you can't. <laughs> okay, well, they're going to... Like, I'm going to do, like, my trees like so, and these are going to hang instead of a wreath, kind of like that behind. Um, I wish the camera could get back far enough for you to be able to, like, see, but, um, yeah, it's it's a little bit hard. But, like, right? Isn't that going to be so pretty? I mean, even this hanging like that, like, you could see 90% of it, and isn't that just going to be gorgeous? And I thought that, well, how much fun is this? Um and how different it is than a traditional wreath. And so that is what I want to make with you guys today. And it is actually easier than you would think. It takes a lot of pieces, but um, let me move this tree out of the way. They're really simple. So basically all you need is all you need. <laughs> you need a few things. <laughs> uh, but primarily you don't need this, but it just makes it go so much faster and so much easier. If you have the Anna Griffin pleated rosette and border the large embossing folder, uh, I want to say these are like three quarter to an inch. Oh, they're seven eighths inch pleats. Uh, are they? Zero. Yeah, they're about seven eighths inch of a pleat, basically an inch. Um, if you're so, if you want to just do it on a scoreboard, uh, just do your paper at one inch um for your rosette score every inch on all your pieces at an inch and then that'll basically give you what this is but honestly I just took and cut a couple pieces of eight and a half by eleven uh sheets of paper eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper in half so these are four and a quarter by eleven inches popped them in the board uh the uh, embossing folder and ran them through my um you know, machine and it was so fast. So these, I, they're quite an investment, but they make it so much easier. And you can honestly, you can stack up two pieces at a time, run them through and they work just beautifully. So it does go a little bit quicker that way as well. Um, especially this is Michael's, uh, cardstock. So yeah, it, it's on the thinner side, um, 65 pound right there. And uh, so it goes really quick if you use this. And that's all you need because this is just a paper decoration. You're not going to keep this forever. It's just something fun to hang instead of a wreath. At least that's the way I look at this stuff when I make these paper items. I'm not making these for keepsakes. I'm just doing it for fun and something different to hang up. Um, and so I know potentially it's going to get thrown away or if I store it and it gets ruined, my heart is not broken. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it was paper, um, proper expectation. <laughs> I, I don't have a museum, uh, or, you know, a historical society to, Hey, can you put this away properly? Um, <laughs> I throw mine in a giant tote and move on and stick it in the garage. <laughs> That's the level of care that I have, you know. Obviously, you're going to be as delicate as you can, but you can't help what happens to it with all the elements. And uh, that the hot and cold in the garage actually makes the stuff pop off. Like, it doesn't stay as secure, um, you know, as a, a you know, a, a, an environmentally controlled place. Uh, you know, climate controlled area. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're you're gonna have much better results. But you know, there it is there. Um, so I, I imagine throwing this away at the end of the, you know, 
season and it's therapy for me. I, I think it's super fun. Um, it engages all those little, um, you know, creative aspect of the brain. Right. And it's super fun. I just enjoy it thoroughly. So, so that's, that's my take on that. So, yeah. So basically to make this read, gosh, that was a lot of rambling. Jeez. <laughs> so get one of these or score your paper at one inch, <laughs> uh, every one inches. Um, so then uh, what you need uh, for the base of this. So like I said, eight and a half by 11 cut in half. So you need five of these though. You need five um, pieces that are eight and a half or I mean <laughs> four and a quarter four and a quarter so eight and a half by 11 cut in half five pieces that are four and a quarter by 11 and I've got five of those and we're gonna fold those all up and then the other thing for the middle rosette I in order to effectually use my paper and not have to waste any I did these at four inches so this is an Anna Griffin 12 by 12 sheet of paper and it actually all goes together in all reality um, depending on probably how you flip it. Um, oh, but we're not going to try to puzzle piece this back together. Jeez, what am I thinking? Oh, but is that? Okay, 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 okay. Um, but anyways, um, one sheet cut in three. So four inches by 12, three pieces for the middle one. And it's this paper here. And this is out of the teacup collection. This is the teacup paper pack and I don't think you can get that and I'm really sorry about that but isn't that beautiful it's like so worth it um and then what you need is out of some red card stock you need to use the um um so I use the enchanted the enchanted dies um the enchanted 3d concentric dies these here this is a heart set uh, it looks like that. I use this middle one here and I cut out one uh, gold and eight in a red cardstock that was different than this cardstock. So this is a dark red and this is a lighter red. This is Michael's as well. Um, I cut eight of these, one of these. The uh, center one here, one red foil and this is Michael's red foil. Um, Anna Griffin's was not the proper color for these colors that I was using. Um, it it was more wine, a whiny looking red uh, on the wine side versus the bright, happy Valentine red. And so that's why I went with this one. And then you need one of the large uh, circles out of the uh, square curd centric compendium dies. And this is a card making set, a card die set. And I used a large circle out of that set there um so let's see did I show that properly so that one there pause and then uh this one this one here that set there okay so one of those in red foil so then the other thing that you need is I used a large doily that I got off of Amazon and this is a 12 inch doily um you get a gazillion in multiple sizes uh, if you get a variety pack on Amazon and you only need one. Uh, you can also get these at Walmart, uh, Joann's, Michael's, um, uh, that sort of thing. Etsy probably has a variety. Oh, uh, Anna Griffin has these. I don't know if hers are in white though, but she has doilies. On her website, AnnaGriffin.com, she has doilies. I don't know, but you could even, you could mimic this. Because the other thing I was looking at too is you could mimic this with a border die and make another rosette in all reality to go around that was a hair bigger. Um, or 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 you could use uh, the heart, this heart. Um this heart die again you could actually use and you do you could do uh eight in white and eight in red and you just stagger them like this and they would basically mimic that all the way around so you could do eight of these and just like shift them like that glue them together like that and then then pop them around like that and that would give you that white as well if you just wanted to stick with what was in your stash and you have these that's a great idea or whatever heart 
whatever heart you have, um, heart dies you have in your stash. Like this one here is, let's see, the widest point is about three, three and three quarters, but you could do a four inch would work just as well. A four inch wide heart would work too. Um, it's nice if it has that like open detail there, but if it doesn't, that's not a big deal either. You would still get the same effect. It would still be just as nice. So you could cut eight white and eight red then and stagger them. Um, okay. And so then the other thing that I used on this was this trim here. I got this trim off of Amazon. Um, this is 10 yards, three fifths of an inch of beaded, uh, scalloped beaded trim. And if you just type in iridescent tr beaded trim, um, beaded trim, pearl trim, all this stuff comes up in Amazon. And these uh, for 10 yards all run about, I want to say around 8 to $10. Um, that double iridescent pack that we did the trees with, I just looked it up. It was $16 for two 100 foot rolls. I mean, that's like a good deal. And then this one here was about the pearl trim, which is what I use for the hanger. This uh, here for 40 meters, this is about, um, I, when I looked it up, was about 8 to $10. So it's actually really, you know, economical. And you get so much to use on your different projects. And you can use this on cards. You can use it in paper projects like this, in wreaths, any kind of home decor. It works just wonderful. And it's really inexpensive. So the other thing I used on this was... I did use some score tape and on my edge here, um, oh, and an embossing folder, but hold on. So on the edge, I added these, uh, metallic gilding flakes. Oh, hang on. That's John. Okay. <laughs> False alarm. It was, it was the beast. He was being wily. <laughs> um, so metallic gilding flakes and you don't have to use finnebear. I just like these because I the container they come in and everything and there's like a gajillion for like I don't know five or six dollars they're really inexpensive. Um, you could use you don't have to use flakes you could use gilding sheets you can use um, this this stuff comes in all different varieties but it's all the same stuff. Um, so whether you use flakes or metallic gilding sheets and they're really inexpensive that's all you need. And what I did to get this on here um, was I ran. A piece of half inch tear tape. Um, this is half inch tear tape, I think. Yeah, half inch tear tape, and um, or score tape, half inch score tape. I just ran this around the edge, and then popped this on the top. Now you don't have to use gilding flakes. You can actually use glitter. You can put diamond dust on it. Um, you could do uh, any kind of like filler type of stuff. Um, that's this this fine style but glitter diamond dust uh you could put um stuff like this uh on it like this stuff that you would put in like shakers um this is from recollections it comes in like this cool multi-pack but you could do those hearts if you uh where are you guys at um you could do this these hearts if you wanted on there you, all you have to do is you just have to put a piece of paper like after you sprinkle it on the tape you put a piece of paper over the top of it and you just rub it and burnish it into the tape so it sticks really well. So these are a little bit chunkier, but it can be done. Um, I would recommend glitter, diamond dust, or the gilding flakes is what I would use instead. But you don't even have to do that, honestly, this detail. You could just leave it embossed because that's also the second thing I did was on this... So I did this first, like we're going to do it together. So the other thing you need is you can use, I use embossing folders. Um, they're uh, A4 in size. I love this size of embossing folder. This is my favorite. And when I see these, I buy them so fast. Like this one is a eight and an eighth, eight and eight and a quarter inches wide by uh 11 and three quarters ish roughly five eighths and um this does a full size sheet of paper um does a full size eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper um and i just i just love this size so much because you can do so many things with it whether you're doing cards all the way down to a an a2 size card or you're doing great big cards like a six by six or a five by seven these are awesome you don't need this size because technically you can do it with the Anna Griffin slimline embossing folder. 
And the reason you can do it with this is because they open to the side. Like that's the other thing is you need the folder to open to the side like this, not top folding. Um, because what you're going to do after we adhere all the pieces together, um, you're going to run your pieces. Your, if, if you put an edge detail on there, um, you want to do that first. So that way the embossing uh, goes through that detail. Like I wanted it to go through my gilding. You don't have to, like if you're doing glitter, I guess, and you could do that with glue. You don't have to do tear tape. You could just put glue on the edge and sprinkle glitter or, or, or uh, diamond dust over the top of it. And I would emboss it first and then do that. Um, but it's fun. I wanted it to go through the gilding flakes and it, you know, so you have that pattern embossed pattern, uh, all the way through it, like really fun. So, uh, that's, so that's the other thing is, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your pieces and you're going to, after they're all taped together to get a seamless, um, uh, embossed border, you're just going to start and you're just going to, you're going to go through your, you're going to start at the top, run it through your machine, and then you're just going to take your tape up to where the last, where the edge of the first one stops and then run another section through. Just put this in your machine and then run the next section through and it'll give you a continuous embossed detail, which is really cool. And if you gild it, it'll go over the top of the gilding. And now the reason this works, even though it sticks out like this, is this is the center of your rosette. You don't even see this piece. You only need this much. So these slimline embossing folders uh, from Anna Griffin work really well. Now, Anna Griffin is basically the only one that I have that is slimline size. I don't, all my other ones are five by seven or they're A2. Um, so I, I don't know if anybody else makes this, but Anna Griffin makes slimline embossing folders and they generally come in a pack of four. This one happens to be the Climbing Rose slimline embossing folder. Um, and it's just fabulous. It's a beautiful uh, folder, embossed detail folder. So anyways, you can use either one of these, um, probably on her website, type in embossing folders and they'll come up, I'm sure, or HSN. Um, so there's that, that's how you get that. If you don't have an A4, um, but I'm using my A4, you can use, you know, whatever you have in your stash. It just has to be obviously side folding so you can continuously run it through and keep going on your whole piece. Cause it's really long when we're done. Um, okay. And then, Okay, so that, that, I think that's everything you need, and we can go ahead and get started. And the other thing, oh, and hot glue. I did use hot glue on this. Um, oh, no, so the other thing you need is you need a bowl. <laughs> you need a bowl. I used a, let me, because I already embossed all of these so we could just go. I mean, I scored them. I have to emboss them. So when you do that, too, you emboss all your pieces through the rosette folder or score them all first and then we're gonna fold them uh so we're done with this stuff but you need um, a bowl you need a bowl and your bowl needs to this is a pyrex no this is an anchor glass bowl out of my you know kitchen and this bowl is about seven and three eighths inch you need it to be at least seven inches wide uh preferably eight but this was the closest I had. Um, and this is for your uh, backer piece on the back for what you're going to adhere your rosette to. Um, that That's what you're going to do is is that's what this does is your backer piece. Now, I ran mine through so it was pretty through my big embossing folder, but you don't have to do that. You could use pretty paper if you wanted to be decorative, but mine is going on a wall. So I wasn't worried about it. And I just used some red cardstock out of my stash. Um, so that's, I think actually, so I can get rid of the bowl. I'm going to do that. So you need two of them. So let's go ahead and make this. So that's about it. And then you need something for a hanger. And I used pearl trim for the hanger to go with this trim. Um, and I put this trim over the top of the gilding because um, the gold was so bright after I got it all done. The gold was just really bright and I toned it down by putting the bead trim over the top of it to, to tamp down the brightness. And uh, I thought that just actually turned out really cool. And I think it's so pretty. I think it's really pretty. And I already hung it up in the living room. I kind of moved some of the Christmas stuff out of the way and um, which is all coming down today and um, moved it out of the way and kind of propped my trees up there. And I'm actually going to end up making two more a medium and a small tree to go with my big white trees um, was actually going to look 
I think the nicest. I'm going to do one red and one pink. Um, so I have kind of all the colors together. And this is cool because even though it's primarily red, the paper gives me my pink and ties it all together. And I think this just looks really cool. Um, I think it's super fun. But um, let me put this out of the way and let's get started. I'm just yakking a whole bunch. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are just hanging out and, uh, yeah, having a good time. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this is probably going to be about an hour video. So I my suggestion is uh, you'll need a pencil, but... Also, get a beverage, hang out, or zoom to the end to see what it looks like if I was able to recreate it with you, right? <laughs> um, and if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you could just kind of fast forward uh, through some of it. So trace your bowl um, just to kind of see the highlights of, you know, how to put it together. Because I know if you've been crafting for a while, some, some of it's like, oh, how did they do that? You can just fast forward a little. And I got two sheets here. I drew the circle just on the top because these don't have to be perfect. Um, they are just backer pieces or connector pieces, um, joiner pieces, whatever you want to call these. I, I don't know the official term for this on a rosette. Um, and so I drew one circle and I'm just going to cut them out together, um, because that's basically how exact you need them. Not really. <laughs> they don't have to be exact. You just want a, an approximate seven inch or larger circle to, um, make your rosette. Um, nice and so yeah so just draw your circle and then cut around it and then I'm actually going to pause you because I do want to go ahead and and yeah you could do them together and then um and you can emboss them together too if you have the big a4 embossing folders um you could do that together so I'm going to run this through my embossing folder and I'll be right back Okay, so I got that all organized. And um, so another trick is I flipped the, when I ran them through my embossing folder, I flipped it over uh, so that way the pencil mark was on the back and I don't have to worry about erasing it and it looking jinky on the back of my project. It'll just look really nice. And so those are my two pieces for my rosette stopper or rosette connectors. And so now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and and you want to take all your pieces, like all your pieces, and uh, you just want to start folding them up. And um, this is as easy as Mountain Valley, Mountain Valley. And um, you, and if the tighter the crease on these, the nicer, um, the the nicer the depth and the prettier your uh, r your rosette is gonna look. It'll it'll just have some really nice pleated detail. And these are so easy to do, um, especially with this giant one inch uh, flap. <laughs> they they go so quick. Uh, that's why I didn't mind the little uh, three eighths or quarter inch ones. Oh, those get those get a little rough on the fingers. But these big inch ones go so fast. Well, this is like seven eighths, anyways. And yeah, and this is like what a great way to make something other than a wreath. And it's all in your stash because if you scrapbook or make cards, most of us have, you know, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and um, can just make it fun. Because even this, you don't have to have a decorative paper. You can just make your own, you know, with stamps and, you know, some gilding waxes or ink or anything like that, you know. Um, so the other thing I did put these together with was scored tape and... Um, that worked really nice for putting these together. So just give them a good squish after you get them done. And like I said, Mountain Valley. And uh, they go so fast uh, putting these together. And isn't this just a gorgeous paper? Roses, aren't they just so like iconic of Valentine's Day? They're so sweet. They're just a beautiful flower. And they just every time I see them, I think Valentine's anniversary, uh, birthday, something super special. That was actually the first gift that John ever gave me on, on our first date. Uh, I was actually really sick. And we were supposed to go on a date. And I, oh my goodness, I was feeling awful. Um, and I was doing, it wasn't even first date. It was like the first time we were like hanging out. And uh, anyhow, um, he brought the most beautiful, most beautiful bouquet of white roses I had ever seen in my entire life. And oh my gosh, what a sweetheart. And um, anyways, they were just absolutely gorgeous. And I ended up saving the pearl ribbon and 
floral ribbon that was around the vase um, that he brought them in. I ended up saving that and using that in my wedding bouquet. Oh, I just, they were so beautiful, but they were like these beautiful white pinkish roses and there were so many of them. It had to cost him a fortune. And, um, you know, when you're first getting together, you're young and your first jobs, you don't have a whole lot of money. So, and then he bought like, he brought like movies. He rented some movies. That was back when you rented movies from like Blockbuster and, you um and then he like bought almost the entire chinese menu <laughs> i mean he brought in all these little boxes of chinese food it was just so fabulous and we just hung out and watched movies and i didn't eat any of like hardly anything because i wasn't feeling well at all and these flowers i just oh my gosh melted my heart obviously why are we married now i mean come on <laughs> what girl wouldn't say yes to roses <laughs> Uh, yeah, not, that's not the only reason, obviously, but oh my gosh, yeah, definitely uh, scored some serious points there with the uh, giant bouquet of gorgeous flowers. I mean, it was like, he went all out. It was so sweet. Oh, sorry. Um, so tutorial, sorry, <laughs> tutorial. Um, so I'm just putting score tape on the edge and this is two strips of quarter inch, a uh, souk wang, use the good stuff if you can, um, or glue, glue works as well. You're just going to connect them like you do a rosette. And, uh, just, I'm just lining this edge up with the embossed edge on this side. So not to impede the folding of it. And as straight as you can, it does not have to be perfect guys. Seriously. I'm, mine's a little wonky cause I'm, ch uh, chattering on and, um, so, but once you get the tape on there and you get them adhered together, squish them, press them, press them together really good and squish them to get your, um, to get the folds back in so that way they're really pre prevalent and nice and formed. Do you want that detail in there? Because, like, isn't that cool? Okay, and then you're just going to actually do this all the way, connect all your pieces um, all the way around. Uh, so, actually, I should do that off camera so you guys, you guys don't need to watch this. So, hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, I was going to let you know, too, um, this is my last one, and I'm actually just putting the score tape on the little ones, and because it's the same on both sides, I'm connecting a big one to the little one. Now, if you have paper um, that is, if you have paper that has a pattern, you can't flip it over. It's like double-sided pattern paper like this is, so I can't flip that over. Um, what you can do is just go to the next um go to the next one um here let me let me show you because I think I'm gonna actually have to do that with with this um but yeah I just connect these anyways um right right to the edge of that so this edge up to that embossed line on this side so not over the folding piece of it just line them up like that and the other thing too is if they don't match don't worry about it like I have a bunch of these like this it's fine um because once you get everything on it you're not even going to see it especially once it's all embossed you're not going to see that but um let me see but there again remember to squish them all up together so these and, and you want to do that on the scored ones so that way they want to go in a in a rosette fashion so now flip it over connect the two ends let me see if it works on oh yeah see so like this is two little ones well that's going to give you something that's kind of funky you don't want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next one like this and I'm going to connect them like that. So you're going to have it, you're going to just put score tape on this piece and the top of this one. So let's do, let's do score tape on this one. Hey, that's not score tape, it's a backer. <laughs> uh, so score tape on this one. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be exact. And this gives you about a 13 and a half inch, roughly, um, to 14 inch. Okay, and so then we're going to go, like I said, we're going to go, so this, this one goes like this. This one is going to go like this. So we want it on the back, on the back side of this tab. So the opposite of that one. And the thing about this is, is you're, you won't actually have this tiny tab. Um, this is only because of the size of the paper and, and the size of the, um, rosettes. 
the the uh, depth of the rosettes because this doesn't happen on the 12 inch. The 12 inch is fine. This one might be a tad smaller, but it's not in significant enough amount in order to see that, and they connect up just fine. Um. So, anyways, you're gonna go like this. So peel this one off. Make sure your tape's all on the top of the tab, like that, and then just um stack it like this. So you still have to skip one and then press it all down and then press this one down uh, as well. Whoops, that, that, that'll be fine. Don't worry about it. But anyways, so it's going to be like that. So you're going to just go and then be sure to do this part. This is super important. So it wants to rosette up. But now you're going to have this like this. See, isn't that great? And then that is where you're going to put this on here. And let me show you, um, here, this is why, whoops, I'm making a, I'm making a, a photo album. Um, but, uh, let's see, it goes, so this is why, so this is like five and a half, roughly-ish, to a six-inch diameter center here. And that's why you need something that's at least seven, um, because you're barely going to get like a half inch. But if it was eight, it would be ideal, because you're going to get... Um, if this is six, a six inch hole, you're going to get an inch on each side. Seven, this being um, seven and a half, I'm going to get like three quarters of an inch, right? So you're kind of working with, that was the biggest size bowl, you know, that I had. But so you're basically going to glue this to that. Oh, far big nougat. Boy, I just did that, didn't I? Oh, that ruined that. Okay, well, huh. All right, okay, so if you forget to emboss, shoot. There was some couple of details I forgot because I was trying to show you guys how to put these together. Uh, this is scored. This is Suk Wang, too. It's not going to... Oh, yeah, that's not coming apart at all. All right, let me think about this. Um, I'm just going to cut it because, yeah, I forgot. Okay, well, if you guys forget a couple steps, cut your rosette. You'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> With all the embossed detail on these things, you're not even going to notice. Okay. Well, I cut mine off. Ah, shucky darn. That's okay. Okay, we'll still connect it, and we'll just do it like this. It'll be fine. We'll just do like, like, yeah, we'll just go like... Like, yeah, we're going to have to do it like that because these are, these go like, so I'll just end up with two inches less. So what does that actually give me? Um, yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. All right, you guys, if you end up doing what I just did, silly rabbit chicks are for kids. You end up with a rosette that is going to be, um, I'm just trying to measure it then and see if it's going to make a significant difference in the design because that's the other thing. Um, for all the elements that I have. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's still fine. Yeah, it was a three and a half or 13 and a half to 14 inch rosette anyhow. So this will still be good. Um, I can still put this on here. I can still do that. It'll be all right. Oh, yeah, and that'll be fine, even with my edge. Okay, so let me show you what you're supposed to do now. So after you get all of your pieces all connected up together, and you you want to fold these all in, um, you want to fold all your pleats in, then you want to connect them all, but leave them all in a, a line. You're going to, now what you're going to do is, if you want to put the decorative edge on, you do that right now. So you're going to go ahead, and you're going to, Flatten all this back out. Um, flatten all of your pleats out. Um, and the reason you did this was so when you go back to accordion it all back up together, it goes way easier. So now what I'm going to do to get my gilding flakes on, if you know, okay, so if you don't want to do the edge, the decorative edge, whether with gilding or with glitter, you just want to leave it. This is where you run this through your embossing folder. You're going to line this up. Um, you're going to line it up. Oh, gosh. I don't even know what I did with that other one. Okay, I'm just going to use mine. But you do it the same way in 
in a um you're just gonna line it up at the top edge like this like this you're just gonna line it up you're gonna run this through like this through your uh machine then what you're gonna do when you get to here you're just gonna ticker tape this up to the top and where it stops you're gonna you're gonna keep going you know so you have a continuous design and then you're just gonna put this into your machine because this will actually go into your machine um here let me show you it it's actually open your your machine actually is open if you have an empress any of them are they're all like this because i was actually using my gemini pro and uh, but see it goes like this and then look it comes out the back see like that so just feed the beginning so just feed the your beginning paper through and then go with your um the rest of your you know plates cuz this is going to be on top of plates you're going to use your normal sandwich you know you're going to do it with your normal sandwich you're going to have it like this you're going to make sure it's all properly in there then feed that in and then feed your then feed your um plates through to get the, that continuous embossing um now i'm going to do this part off camera um uh, I'm going to do this off camera, but right now I'm going to show you because I'm doing, I want mine to match my other ones. So you're going to skip ahead. So if you want to do yours, uh, go ahead and emboss yours if you don't want to do this part because this is kind of messy. Um, but it's fun. It makes it so pretty. Um, and that's why I like it. So I use that half inch uh, tear tape. So let me grab that. Uh, you'll probably want some paper to help contain your gilding flakes if you have it. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape and you're going to run it on the edge of your, and if you have a pattern you're putting this on top of, you want to make sure that it's the outer edge of your pattern. Um, and you're just going to run this uh, on the edge of your, all the way down, like this. Run your tear tape all the way down on the edge. Oh, and if you go over, it's okay, just readjust it'll be fine you won't even once it's all together you won't even hardly notice it and if you have a little bit of a line you can like see that edge that's a good thing because <laughs> that means the sticky is not off the edge of the paper so you're just going to keep going all the way down like this and it, and like there's a bigger gap there I have it on my other one you don't even notice it hardly um it it's just it just is all part of the charm <laughs> We're going to call it charm. <laughs> it's handmade. <laughs> and once it's sitting uh, like on hanging on your wall or, okay, I don't want that big of a gap, big of a gap, but, and then I'm going to cut that off so I don't have that piece. That was where I, this is the party fell one. <laughs> um, so now what you want to do is no, don't, don't take that off. So we'll just leave that. Uh, don't don't take don't take the backer off yet <laughs> and you're just going to take the backer off in sections because uh, what you want to do now is you want scratch paper um you want some something to capture these on and you need a little bit of a you need a like a this is just a paintbrush a crafter paintbrush um something soft bristled um this is going to help you get the gilding flakes off if you've never used gilding flakes so basically peel your backer off. Um, I just do it in, in sections. So I just tear off a piece, get a section I want to work with. So it's not all sticky. And if this was glitter, you're going to sprinkle your glitter. Then you're going to, you're going to put paper. You're going to like, if you're doing it like I am, sprinkle your glitter on, fold your scratch paper over the top and burnish it in really good. And then tap your glitter off. If you're doing gilding flakes, you're just going to lay, you know, get chunks of gilding flakes and just start popping them on, making sure you're covering all the tape. Um, and I've already done this and you can see how much is still left uh, with the gilding flakes. And you're just going to, you're just going to rub these onto the tape, burnish it into the tape is all you're doing. And just go and layer, layer, layer all your gilding flakes on there. And it's, you just go down the whole thing. And it actually seems like 
This is going to take forever. It actually doesn't take that long at all. It goes really quick. Just burnish it down with your finger. If it's glitter, I would use, I would put a paper over it and then burnish it down. But this is, these, these are so soft and really nice. So, um, yeah, not a big deal. Okay. And now if you get it, if you get some on the edge, right, um, like this, just run your finger like that. Okay. And now you're going to, if you, okay. So if your finger doesn't burnish off the, like give you as crisp of an edge as you want, use the paintbrush to help brush off, um, to brush off the excess too, um, like that. And then this helps you um, get it off the rest of your paper. You just brush off the rest of your paper like that. That's all you do. It's like that simple. And so let me go ahead and, um, and you can even like these pieces here, like these tiny pieces. Um, so just peel off another section like that. These tiny pieces, you can actually pick them up. Oh, whoops. <laughs> they float real easy. So be, <laughs> be gentle. Don't be like quick and creating wind <laughs> like I'm doing. Um, but all these like little pieces here, you can actually, if you can pick them up, you can like pull, put them on the tape and burnish them in and use up all these, these tiny pieces that are like floating off or that you, you know, brushed off those, those work really good too. So, but, uh, let me finish this up and I'll be right back. Okay. So got that done and look how pretty that is. Isn't that fun? And then once we enhance that with, yeah, the adhesive was showing there. And so I got a little there. But by the time we're all done with this, you're not even going to be able to tell. And if your tape goes over like you saw mine did a little bit, um, just fold it over and then and then burnish the gilding. And the other thing you want to make sure of is your hands are wet. Um, because the gilding flakes will stick to you like crazy. Um, yeah, they're so light and delicate that any moisture on your hands in all reality, um, they'll stick to your hands, <laughs> but isn't that super fun? So now the next step is to, um, like I was saying is to run it through the embossing folder. So whether you do this with a slimline one or any side folding one, like if you have some side folding five by sevens, that would be really cool. Um, so you're just going to start, you know, at the top like this and pop it in the empress takes you have to have a metal shim your bottom plate a metal shim your embossing folder and then your and then um your top plate and then you're just going to run this through your machine so let me do that and i'll be right back okay so watch this oh isn't that so pretty look at and then it's in the gilding too like, okay, and so now to get the continuous design, you're just going to shift this to the top, uh, right, right at the edge there, and you are going to fold it over, and then, like this, you're going to just keep, and now, like I said, you feed this piece in, so if you're, you've already done this with yours, just, like, fast forward, <laughs> And so then you just keep going in like that, see? And then it um you just keep you just keep going along and it feeds right in and then you'll just pull it right out and it works really cool. So I know this is like tedious, but for all these little steps you have to do, but in all reality, like these whoops, these type of details is actually what makes it so stinking fun. And then see, like, isn't that great? And, and then you have that like super fun embossed continuous detail. So let me finish this up and I'll be right back. Okay. The other thing I was going to say, once you get to the end, um, like you're just a couple sections away, I flip mine around. So that way the end I'm feeding in is shorter, um, when I'm doing it. And then I start from where I left off here and then I'll emboss the last piece. And then you, it's, it's easier to do that, to feed it in cause it's shorter. So just another little tip. Hang on. Okay, I got that all finished up. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to um, put all your pleats back in. So you want to fold your rosette all back up uh, to get your pleats all in again. And see, because we've already done this, how easy this is. And uh, yeah, isn't that just beautiful? Oh my goodness. And there were some spots where I overlapped the, um, I overlapped 
the embossing and stuff, don't worry about any of that type of stuff because once you get it all together, it is going to be so pretty. You're not even going to notice any of that. And uh, so, yeah. So once it gets too big for me to hold, I start with another section and just keep, you know, going. And see, like, don't worry about that. Just push that little detail down and just keep going. Don't. It's going to all look really pretty when you're all done. So don't don't worry about any of that, okay? And, uh, yeah, this goes really quick. And now, <laughs> this is where you connect it. We should have done those two steps first and then connected it. But, eh, you know, <laughs> you, can't, you can't be perfect with everything, right? So I'm putting the um, outside. And now I'm just going to put a score tape on these two pieces. And I'm going to, actually, this side looks nicer. I'm going to feed mine like this and uh, connect them like that. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we got that connected. And now what you want to do is you want to just fold it all in to where your beautiful gilded details on the outside like right is that gorgeous come on so pretty so pretty and like that embossed edging just lovely okay so now now what you want to do is you want to take your one of your circles um and yeah one of your circles and this is the top so this is where it matters the most um is where this is and all i do is i put a bead of hot glue on the back of this uh, just right on the edge and then I just line it up in the center and I shape my yeah hold on let me let me let this heat up I just turned it on hang on I'll be right back okay hot glue gun heated so yeah so just take and put a bead of hot glue around the edge of your um little circle topper uh, I'm not sure what this piece is called but it holds the rosette together uh, like so and you're just gonna now you want to make sure that your your like look at your look at your rosette when it's sitting on the table make sure that it's a uniformed hole for the most part put try to line this up in the center making sure you have even spacing and then before you really push it down just make sure it's like centered and looks really good and for me this looks this looks pretty good for me. Now, I'm going to hold this down and wait for it to adhere, and I'll be right back because there might be something else you have to do. Hold on. Okay, so that one's pretty much good. Um, but now what you want to do is you want to pick it up, flip it over, and then put the one on the back. You still have to put one on the back. So go ahead and run a bead of glue. I need another glue stick. A bead of glue around the edge of this one. And you could put quite a lot on this one because this backer is technically the one that is going to be really holding your rosette together. The top one is just decorative. And I was I like to put that one on first. It's not decorative. It, it's still substantial uh, to the project. Like you really, you know, want it to be on there well. But that's the one that you want to be centered up for the most part. Um, the nicest. Um, because of the looks, that's the shape of the rosette is what you're going to see. And actually, you're not even going to see that top one. So now we're just going to let, and that looks pretty good there. We're just going to let this it, it set up and adhere and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm going to flip it over to the front. And I want to make sure that this is attached like everywhere it needs to be. And if it doesn't feel secure, I'm just going to sneak my glue gun under there. And on the ribs, I'm going to put hot glue and attach this topper piece on there. And anywhere that it seems like it's not adhered down. And psh, we did good. Nice. So the next step we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to pop our doily on or whatever decoration is you're going to use. And what you're going to do is you're going to eyeball this, making sure you have about the same border all the way around the outside from the edge of your centerpiece. Whether you're using that heart, don't line it up in the center. Line it up on the edge because that's what you're going to see. Um, so I'm just going to make sure this is all looks good where I want it. And then I'm just going to put my hand on it, fold one side over, and run glue over, put, put glue on this side press that down and then flip the other side over and put glue and adhere this side down and you want to make sure you have a fair amount on there 
because this doily is actually this topper piece is what is going oh whoops is what is actually uh holding the rest <laughs> of your project on is this doily is holding it all to the the um the giant rosette so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my hearts and you'll notice when i'm gluing these on um that one of them um i wasn't too worried about the fact that it didn't cut all the way out um and uh but you're not going to see that. So I technically could have just done the top part of that heart. But, you know, <laughs> I was in the mode. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and glue these down. So I'm going to pop. Um, and I'm just lining this piece up here to the middle of that. Because that looks like a heart to me. And I'm just going to put that on that edge. And make sure that it looks nice. Because I'm lining it up with that scallop the two scallops with the two scallops on the heart. So I'm just going to do that all the way around and I'll be right back. Okay, so the next step on this uh, fun little rosette journey is uh, we have to put this one together, the middle rosette together now. Um, and this goes together just like uh, the other one. You're just going to take and you're going to adhere them all together like this and like so. And then, um, you know, fold it on itself like that, connect the two pieces, and rosette it again. Let me get these connected, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got those connected, and now I got score tape on the back of each of these last two tabs. Um, and that way, they'll secure really nice to each other. Um, so just peel the backers off, and I'm just going to pop this right over this mountain ridge here. And making sure it all lines up, press it down. And then I'm squeezing these ends together so that way my pleats end up really nice. And now what you're going to do is, uh, like all the other ones, anytime you make a rosette, you're going to fold it down. And you're, ugh. <laughs> you're going to put your, oh, this paper is stiffer, um, uh, is more weight, uh, GSM, than the Michaels. Oh, come on. So if you pleat, if you squeeze all your pleats, like really enforce all the pleating, the folds, it usually goes to get, goes um, a little bit, come on, son. <sighs> oh, I should have held it, darn you. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, I got it rassled back in, but if you re-scrunch up all the pleats, it makes it easier to fold it back down. It's not so floppy and not wanting to do what, um, not wanting to be grumpy. <laughs> so this one here, what I'm going to do is I have this. This is going to be the center of my, um, the topper for my rosette. And I'm going to put this on and then glue this straight down to the middle of the big one. So uh, what I want to do is kind of eyeball it here like where is it gonna line up at isn't that paper so pretty oh oh please be on please be hot. no hang on let me heat this up hold on okay so i'm not actually gonna put that topper on first i'm actually gonna line this up on here first and so what i'm gonna do is i know that my edge is about a this from the top of this heart is about, I'm going to be about a half inch in. So I'm just going to put hot glue right in the center and a bunch. Um, so it adheres, my rosette adheres down really good um, to it. You want to make sure your glue is nice and hot too uh, for it to adhere really good. Um, yeah, you want to. And then also when you go to put the rosette down, make sure you have like your large cutting plates or something really heavy uh, to put on the top of it. Um, so that way it will hold the road set down so it can adhere, uh, to the center here. So yeah, I'm just putting quite a bit of, uh, hot glue all in the center so that way it'll just stick really nice. And so now I'm just picking up my rosette and I'm doing this first because this is actually what I want it to line up on. I want it to be nice and centered in this I'm making sure all my edges have even spacing uh, all the way around as best as I can you know it's not going to be perfect but and then my rosette has even spacing as well and once I get it to where I'm pretty happy with it 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and set my heavy uh, plates on it. Um, so that way it holds it down and it'll, it'll hold it down to allow the glue to adhere. So hang on, I'll be right back after this setup. Okay, now that that is down, what you want to do is you want to pick like now, now you want to pick what is going to be your top. Um, so I think I want mine to be like this. This looks the nicest orientation to me. And so, um, and as you can tell, it's not perfect, but it's fun, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this center piece there. And, um, yeah, I already tried to glue it on and my hot glue wasn't hot enough. And, uh, what a bummer. Uh, but anyhow, but I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of, and honestly, I don't, I think I should be score taping this down, but the hot glue is here and, um, I'm just going to use it and go for it. But if it, if it makes funkiness, you'll know when you go to do yours, don't do it like that. <laughs> you score tape. <laughs> so, and then I got this jankiness here. I'm going to put that at the bottom because I think I can cover that up, center it up, make sure I got even spacing. Oh no even spacing ish all the way around and then I'm gonna put my plates on the top of that I think that looks pretty good that looks pretty good okay no I think I, I think I'm gonna be good with that I'm I'm perfectly fine with that and now what I want to do is um, I want to put my center hearts on so we're gonna put the gold one on and we're gonna put this on like that so I bet I could do hot glue on this. Because you don't need a whole lot of, and it's primarily because it's sitting on the table is why I'm using this. Not for any other reason. It's just here. <laughs> so lined it up, even spacing, looking nice. Yeah, right? Hey, I think we covered up our little party fell down there pretty decently. Yeah, I lined it up. Where do I want this? Right? Or yeah. Oh, it's gonna be there now, right? <laughs> not 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 nowhere no way else to do that's that's the top. That's it. <laughs> okay, so you can stop here and be done. And how pretty is that, right? And then look at look at all that gorgeous embossed detail with the gilding flakes and everything else. And how fun is that? You just need a hanger at the top and uh, all I do is I go from the top of the hearts up I follow it up and then on either side of where the center is so this looks like center I'm gonna put my little pearl hanger on each side so evenly spaced um, on each side and hot glue it on the back and that's what I'm gonna use to to uh, hang my rosette but I'm not actually done there <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hot glue uh the detail around the um i'm gonna hot glue the detail around the edge so i'm gonna hot glue this on every rib i'm gonna hot glue my trim down and then on every rib around here i'm gonna hot glue this trim around and let me put that on and i'll be right back literally just putting a bead of hot glue on every rib um is it and then gluing that all down so let me do that and i'll be right back okay and once i get it all hot glued all the way around um I like see this one's gonna overlap. Don't worry about it. Just, just you know, cut it off where you know it ends there, and then just put a tiny bit of uh, glue there, and let it sit there. And no one is even gonna notice, um, you know, that it connects there. It just everything else looks so so pretty. Uh, like that, isn't that just so gorgeous that way? Um, and now I just have to do this one here in the center, and um, I'm just gonna go around and hot glue it and it doesn't matter where you uh, start um you just um just go around and like like that I'm just gonna follow this all the way around and get that on there and I'll be right back okay there we go and uh oh I gotta put the hanger on <laughs> so I'm going to let's see go right up this this I'm just eyeballing it this is my center and uh, hang on one second. If that's my center. Ho hold on one second. Let me look at my other one. Okay. So I found my center point and all I did on my other ones was I went on each side of where my center was uh, with a bead of hot glue on each of the little pieces. Um, 
So there and here, right in the center of each of the tabs, and just made an even, made it even uh, spacing. The same as my other one. So that way it would have the same length of hanger is, is all I did. Um, so like that. And then to secure this really nicely, I'm going to put a little bit of extra glue on each of these uh, pearl uh, hanger pieces. Uh, like that. And that is it. Other than... Um, other than taking off all the strands of glue and stuff, that's that's it. That's the project. How easy was that, right? Isn't that a hoot? And then look at that. Look how pretty. Isn't that just so pretty? It's so festive. It's got a heart on it. It's very Valentiny. And um, there it is. Now I got one for each side of my TV. And like I said, they come out to be oh, not big enough. <laughs> they are about fourteen inch, roughly fourteen and a half inch in diameter is what they is what they and ow oh, that hurt don't do that um four, 14 and a half inch is what they end up about a 14 inch diameter um faux wreath <laughs> or rosette rosette wreath we could call it a rosette wreath but uh there it is let me know what you guys think down in the comments below i hope you are having a terrific weekend um a happy new year and i hope you guys are all super well healthy blessed and happy and have an amazing 2024 um a really awesome 2024 thanks so much for hanging out if you could do me a favor it cost you nothing hit the like the subscribe do all the things leave a nice comment down below i would really appreciate it and i appreciate each and every one of you thanks again and until next time happy crafting everyone Bye bye